Hello everyone, welcome back to Anonymous so, World. Hope you all are doing well. So today is December 24th and day 24 of Advent of Cyber 3rd edition is out. So let's see what we have in day 24. Okay, so day 24 is post exploitation learning from the Grinch. Okay, let's see the story. So Skiddy has learned a lot about how Grinch Enterprises operates and wants to prepare for any future attack from anyone who hates Christmas. Okay, from a forensic analysis they did. She noticed that the Grinch Enterprises performed some malicious activities. She wants to perform these on the same machine they compromised to understand her adversaries a little better. So, can you follow along and help her prepare for any other attacks? Okay, so let's start our machine first. Okay, so let's see learning objectives. So, in this task, you will learn about, you will understand post exploitation, how passwords are stored on Windows, dump password from LA, LA, LSA WS process on Windows, crack password hashes. So first, let's see what is post-exploitation. So this stage usually occurs after an attacker has gained unauthorized access to a system. And during this stage, an attacker will aim to do following things such as uh, escalate their privileges. So when an attacker has successfully gained unauthorized access to a system, he or, she, uh, he will, he or she will try to escalate their privileges uh, to obtain access to sensitive information or critical functionality that is only available for to higher privileged users for example administrative portals to manage users then maintain persistence within the target environment and attacker would set up other mechanisms to maintain access to the environment if their current access has been blocked or removed okay so the information retrieved in the post exploitation stage allows attackers to enumerate identify and exploit other components on the broader environment or network or for example, an attacker has compromised a system that stores HR information. So in that case, they can use the uh, employee names or details to carry out social engineering attacks against these employees. So for such case, we will be looking at a common post exploitation scenario when an attacker has gained access to a privileged user in Windows. So it is prevalent for attackers to dump password hashes and uh, to crack them to retrieve clear text user passwords. Okay, so let's see what is password hashing. So a password hash represents the original password that has been converted to another form. So hashing this password applies a one-way transformation to change the clear text password to a form that cannot be easily recognized. So various types of algorithms perform this hashing including MD5, SHA-1 and SHA-256. There are many more. An example is given. So our input was password123 and we want to encode it into md5 so our md5 result for this clear text password will look something like this okay so the password is converted to a string of unrandom characters by the md5 algorithm so using password hashing allows system to verify whether passwords are correct without storing the original password okay if the passwords are hashed it can be difficult for an attacker to retrieve the clear text password and of course it depends on the algorithm in use and the complexity complexity of the user's password okay let's uh, see ahead while these hash functions are one-way function that are supposed to make it very difficult to retrieve the clear text password under such uh, addons, under certain conditions attacker can still recover the clear text password that corresponds to a password hash so a common way to do this is by passing various inputs to the hashing algorithm and checking whether the output corresponds to the original hash so for example if the password hash in the given question is this random string and then attacker knows that the hashing algorithm is md5 so attacker can try various forms of password to see if hashes ma matches with the original hash okay so he can try brute forcing using password 1 to password 1 to 3 password 1 to 3 4 so attacker can try you know, different combinations to see if to see uh, which hash matches with the original hash so in this example password hash for password one two three matches the original hash provided above okay now authentication and hashing so windows store various credentials in the sam database which stands for security accounts manager commonly credentials such as user passwords are stored as hashes within the sam database so two most common hashes stored in SAM database are first is LAN manager, you can also call it LM. This has is the oldest known password storage used by Windows. 
okay so the algorithm we used to create this has utilizes a limited character set as input so it's possible to try all combination of letters and numbers then second is ntlm ntlan manager so modern windows system use this hashing algorithm to store passwords so whenever a user logs onto a local windows machine the local security authority subsystem service or lsa ss process retrieves the user's credentials from the sam database it compares this against the hashed form of user's password so if the hash if the hash of the password entered by the user matches the password stored in database then the user can successfully log in okay now dumping password hashes so deploy the machine attached to this task using the green start machine button okay we are done with that access the machine on 10.10.100.150 this machine is accessible in the browser alternatively you can also access the machine via rdp using the credentials okay now additionally deploy the attack box which will be used in a later section of this task okay so let's deploy our attack box Okay, let's see. Now, when an attacker gets access to a local Windows system, one of the first thing they would do be to dump the password hashes stored in the LS AWS process. Since the since this process has to interact with the database and store credentials in memory, it usually runs with more privileges than a standard user. Okay, so one such tool to retrieve password has for memory is Mikats. Okay, one GitHub repository link is given for this tool. It has various modules that can be used to ex extract different kinds of credentials. For this exercise, we'll be using the Sekal Sum module. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce this. Okay, open PowerShell using the start menu and navigate to this location and run the Mikats program. Okay, so let's view this in full screen. Okay, let's open our PowerShell. Okay, so now we need to go to C users administrator desktop and the cards to six four. Okay. So let's go to desktop. Okay, here is our folder. Okay, sorry, that's typo. Okay, then this. Okay, so we are done. And run the Mikars program. Okay, so we need to run the program. We can do this by this. Okay, so we are good to go. Our tool is running. Now let's see what we have to do next. Use the following command to check if you have the appropriate privileges to run the program. Okay, let's see our privileges. Okay, so privilege 20. Okay, this is the required output. Now once we verify that you have the appropriate privileges, we will be dumping the password from the LS AWS memory using the Sekarulsa module. So this module is used to extract various credentials from the LSA SS memory. You need administrator access or a system account to use this module. So within this module, we can use the logon passwords function to extract the credentials for currently logged in users. Okay, so let's use this module. Okay, so it's a big output. Let's see what we have. Okay, so authentication ID, then username, then domain, then logon server, logon time, many things are given. Username THM, domain workgroup, password null. Then we have more authentication ID. It is username at DWM2, DWM1. Let's see what we have more. Okay. 
username emily okay so we found one user which is emily domain is thm login time is given and also ntlm hash is given and sha1 hash is given so we can try to crack it and extract the clear text password for this user let's see okay then there one user is administrator so ntlm has for administrator is given to okay let's see what we have to do next from the output above you can see that we could obtain the ntlm and sha1 hashes for another user logged on to the machine now that we have the ntlm password hash let's try to crack the hash to retrieve the clear text password okay so now we need to crack those let's see what we can do next so next is cracking password hashes in the previous section we mentioned that we could pass in the combination of potential input to the hashing algorithm in use and compare these hashes against our target hash in the so in this case we will use a tool called john the ripper to crack the password hashes to use john the ripper start the attack box and copy the ntlm hash we recovered into a file called hash.txt okay so let's copy our hash Okay, let's uh, paste this and we'll call it uh, hash.txt. Okay, now we need to use John. So, if you don't know the syntax, the syntax is given here. You can use this. Okay, so first John, then format. So, our format is nt, uh, ntlm. Then the word list we will be using. So, in this case, we will be using rockq.txt. Then our file name. Okay, let's see. Okay, so something is there. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Is this our password? Let's see. Okay, so format is used to represent the type of hash. This is the word list containing the input password hash. Hash.txt represent the text file containing the hash. And port is equal to output.txt represent the output file okay so let's see our questions so what is the username of the other user on the system so first emily what is the ntlm hash of this user so this must be ntlm hash let's copy paste this okay let's copy this again So what is the password for this user? So we just cracked it. So it's one two three four five six seven eight nine zero. Okay, so this was the password for Emily, and we are done with our day twenty four. Let's see what we will be having for final day, which is day twenty five, the Christmas day. So till then, that's all for this video. I will see you in the next video.